Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the January 17th Board of Supervisors meeting. We're going to start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Judge Fink, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge I allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Item B, adoption of the agenda, Madam Manager. Good morning, there are no changes to the agenda. Okay. Chairman, I will go ahead and move that we adopt the agenda as posted and deliver and allow chair to deviate as necessary. A second. A motion is second, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye, motion carries. Item C is called to the public. I have one speaker slip, Mr. Tilford. Oh, that's Judge Fink. My apologies. <laughs> Judge, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, um, members of the Board of Supervisors, County Attorney's Office. I'm here this morning representing the Arizona uh, Santa Cruz County Superior and um, Justice Court and, um, and the whole court system. Uh, I had requested, uh, I just need to make a record of something, and I had requested that there be an agenda item about the court's process of transitioning to an independent personnel system uh, in part, not in whole, but in part from, from Santa Cruz County. Uh, I had submitted this matter as an agenda item and it was denied. Uh, I also want to note that I learned it was denied from one of my staff members, not from anybody from <coughs> uh, the county, but be that as it may. Um, I wanted to discuss this agenda item. I wanted to discuss it as an agenda item. And uh, I was told that it couldn't be an agenda item. All I was asking you to do was to allow me to present some information to you, engage in a discussion with you, answer any questions that you have, uh, and have an open, transparent, public discussion with the three of you about where this issue is at this time. And as all I was asking you to do is in public, uh, encourage and instruct your staff to engage in discussions in good faith and negotiations in good faith, faith with the court system on this issue. We have an open meeting law in Arizona, um, as you are very well aware, and that prohibits me from engaging in discussions collectively with the three of you as members of the Board of Supervisors, except in a public forum like this. Um, and that's all I wanted to do. And, you know, these are important matters. It's important matters to the county, it's important to the court, to the employees, and I assume to some of the members of the public as well. Uh, I'm really disappointed that, and this is the second time this has happened, it happened once years ago. I'm very disappointed as an elected official um, of an independent branch of government of this county and as presiding judge, which means I'm an appointed representative of the Chief Justice of the State of Arizona for the Supreme Court for the State of Arizona. I'm his designated representative here and I'm very disappointed that you have blocked me from having an open discussion with you, answering any questions that you have um, and addressing you and discussing this matter collectively with you as required by the open meeting law and that we're not able to do that. Um, and I don't understand why. Um, no one's given me a, a reason that I think is an acceptable reason why your presiding judge as an elected official, as a representative of the Chief Justice can't appear before you in a meeting and have a discussion like this and answer any questions. And if it requires a vote of some kind, vote. Vote yes or no. Um, and it puts, it just, as we go through this process, and we're not going to stop this process, it's going to continue. As we go through this process, it, it makes it very, very difficult to um, try to work through it in a collaborative way with you. And, and ultimately, it's going to be your decision about what happens. Um, as far as the county is concerned. 
because I can't do that <coughs> under the open meeting law. And so it's going to make it very difficult to engage in the process the way it should have been done. The whole agenda item, if you had allowed it to be presented, probably would have taken five minutes. Not an extensive issue. It's just a presentation of what we're doing, where we're going, where we want to go, and just asking you to engage with us and for, for us to have some dialogue. Um, but we've been blocked. Um, it's obviously not a time issue. I've attended your meetings many times before. Looking at your agenda, I'm confident even if with your agenda as stated or with our item, you all would have been out by lunch. It's not a time issue. So this is the way I feel, and I think the law supports, that we should do this. We have, should have an open discussion. It ought to be transparent. We ought to be accountable to the people and do it in, in public and in, op in open. We've always all been respectful with each other and have a respectful discussion about it and get this moving um, in a way that's productive where we don't have a lot of people in the middle because ultimately at the end of the day, you're going to have to vote on this at some point and I'm the one who's going to ask you to do it and so we ought to be able to have this discussion about it. So, um, and really, um, in the event that we're not able, down the road, ultimately, after all this process is finished, if we're not able to agree, then this could, I hope not, it's not my hope, this could go to litigation. And it could be protracted and expensive. And, and that's not what I want to have happen. I'm trying to avoid that. But it doesn't make it any easier when I can't appear before you in an open meeting to discuss this. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Fink. Is there anybody else in the room that'd like to? Mr. Chairman and Judge, before you leave. And, and I'm sorry, I, I sh it was rude of me just to do that. I, I have some court at 10 o'clock. That's why I started to leave. But I, I'm, I'm, I have plenty of time, whatever you want to. So, so I'm going to point out a couple of things. Number one, you can meet with us individually as long as you don't tell the other members what our discussion was. It doesn't violate the open meeting law. Number two, from what I understand, this agenda item that you wanted was an administrative order that you sent to our staff, and our staff sent it out to be reviewed by outside counsel. You're talking about transparency. I want to show you transparency. So that's the reason it didn't come here, because outside counsel is looking at it, not because of anything else. You and I have met in my office before. I think you met with Chairman Bracker, and I'm sure you've probably met with Supervisor Valera. And so, that doesn't preclude you from calling and saying, would you like to meet? We can talk anything you want to, but if you go and you do a daisy chain, then it becomes an issue. That's where the violation of the old open meeting law. So, you know, it would have been nice that we would have had the opportunity to say something before this, before you got up, but I just want to clarify that we're always available, at least I am, and I've always made myself available to discuss these things. You know, whether you're representing the courts or not, but once that judicial or administrative order was issued and you created a three member person to do that, at that point, our staff did the right thing. They contacted legal, legal sent it out to outside counsel to make sure that it's done in proper form before we can put it on the agenda and have the discussion in the open as you're suggesting. I just wanted to clarify that point. So right, fair enough. There's no, no misunderstanding. Fair enough. Now, let me, let me uh, add something to that. Um, number one, um, your outside counsel contacted me in October to talk about this. And I immediately responded, absolutely. I welcome the opportunity to talk to your lawyer, the lawyer about this. That was in October. Never heard from him. Never heard from him. That was in October. Number two, in response to your appropriate suggestion that I talk to you individually, um, what's the problem with doing it collectively in the public? Why do it individually behind closed doors, quietly, where there's no transparency or there's no accountability? I could do that, but there's also, sir, I would suggest, respectfully suggest that there's a benefit. And I'll stop. I know you want me to sit down. Now you're getting signals from. I just, want, I just want to explain. There's a benefit. There's a benefit 
to having an open discussion with three of you together, as opposed to individually, in the public, where the public can see. It's a more productive discussion if the three of you are able to engage together. Um, it would have taken five minutes. And, and I just wanted to tell you the direction that we were going. I wasn't going to ask you to vote on anything and, uh, and answer any questions you have in an open discussion. So I could have gone to you individually, but you have these meetings, I assume, for a purpose, and that's to engage in an open discussion of these things in public. And, I'm, and I think that's the preferred way of doing it. So just... So that's so, just, so that was just in response so to it. You misunderstood what I told you, is that nothing precludes you from meeting with us individually. Not that we're going to decide be, behind closed doors, because we, as individual supervisors, have no authority to do anything. You can talk to us individually all you want, but at the end of the day, if it's not on the agenda, it's not here, we can't discuss it and we can't vote on it. Number two is I did not realize that our outside counsel had talked to you in October. It's the first, and thank you for letting me know because now I know something else. But at the end of the day, Judge, it's not that we want to do things behind closed doors, and we never have, and we never will, because we want the public to be very aware of what it is that we're doing to protect the interest of the public, to work with our other departments, to work with the courts. And so we have to juggle a lot of balls up in the air, not just your department, but we have the sheriff's department, the county attorneys, every other elected official and department that we have to. So it's not that we're excluding you, but we just want to make sure at the end of the day, that it meets the legal mustard so that we can, and that's all that I'm suggesting, not that we're going to do it behind closed doors. And at some point, if they say it's good to go, Judge, we'll have the discussion here, and if it takes five minutes or five hours, we'll be here to listen, and we'll, hear, we'll give you the feedback. That's not the issue, but that's the only reason that it didn't appear on this agenda. And I just wanted to clarify for the record, you talk about transparency, I want you to understand that this is the, why it wasn't put on the agenda, so we can be transparent with you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate your comments, sir. Thank you. And as I said, I usually stay for your meetings, but I do have a 10 o'clock no. juvenile calendar. I apologize. I have to leave. Okay. If have I can be, thanks, Judge. If have I can a be good day, Judge. Have Thank, a good day. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the room that would like to address the board? <clears throat> Dr. Verona. Thank you. Good morning, Supervisories. Dr. Montiel and I... Bracker. Bracker. I'm sorry. <laughs> we look alike, but... <laughs> ...would like to participate in the discussion on item 15. That's the ARPA. I think we so have that's gonna, we're going to have a study session, and that's when you'll be able to participate. At the study session before. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is there anybody online who would like to address the board? Okay, seeing nobody coming up to the podium, we'll move on to current events. Mr. Chairman, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, I have a couple items to report. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to send out uh, my continued prayers to my uncle, Octavio Molera, who recently passed. Um, he was a big role model for me growing up, a wonderful person. So my continued prayers to him and his immediate family. Um, I had the honor of attending uh, Mayor George Maldonado's uh, address and his uh, uh, inauguration on, uh, a week ago, a week and a half ago. I'm super proud of George. I grew up with George, and I, I look forward to working with George, as I said before. Uh, last Friday I had an LPC meeting, so things are starting to get rolling at the state. Uh, not, not a whole lot of uh, uh, um, What's LPC? legislation going on. LPC is the Legislative Policy Committee, um, where I represent Santa Cruz County, and we review all the current legislation, the, the bills going through, and and we uh, basically make decisions on whether to support or uh, deny these or, or go against these uh, 
um, pieces of legislation that could be harmful to counties and, and, and basically in a nutshell that's what LPC is. Um, I also had the honor of uh, attending the State of the State uh, with Governor Katie Hobbs in Tucson. Uh, look forward to working with our, our new governor. And uh, that is all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Supervisor Reese. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, congratulations on the opening of your restaurant. I had the opportunity <laughs> yeah. to yeah, that's partake right. twice, and, and it's good, and the service is great, and it's good to see very familiar faces as wait staff and also my old friends that we, we've been getting together there. Uh, a, f a few things. Number one is uh, my condolences to the Moleta family. I didn't know your uncle had passed away, Rudy, so please know that he will be in our thoughts and our prayers. Thank you. I also want to send out condolences to Esther Lopez Menendez. Her mom passed away. Uh, she wasn't at the inauguration uh, when George took office, which I was there along with my colleagues. And also, uh, uh, Lena Fowler's uh, sister uh, died in a car accident last week. Uh, so our condolences to Supervisor Fowler uh, and her family as well. Uh, as uh, Supervisor Moleta said, I also attended the Soaring Inn inauguration of, of George Maldonado, and it, uh, it was uh, interesting to see all the mayors from Douglas, Sahuarita, House in Mexico, the governor of Florida, <coughs> and so uh, as uh, Supervisor uh, Moleta has said, and, and, Br and Supervisor Brecker as well, we look forward to meeting and working together with the city. I did have the opportunity this last week to go to Mobile, Alabama, part of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation through NACO, NACO for Economic Leadership mobility network and got the opportunity to tour a few of the areas uh, as it relates to economic development. One was Airbus. Airbus is assembling a lot of the uh, big jet planes there. They're, they're trying to ramp up to do between eight and ten planes a month. <coughs> They'll probably be getting a contract with Lockheed Martin to do tankers. Uh, and we also got the opportunity to go to Africa Town. For those of you that are not aware, there is a documentary film on Netflix called The Descendants. It's very interesting. It was the last uh, slave ship that came to the Americas after the law had been abolished and how they burnt the ship to sink it so that there would be no evidence. But there was 110 people aboard, and, and they had always talked about it, and they finally uh, found the ship, and it was just very interesting talking to some of the people that that are part of descendants of, of those 110 that were kidnapped <coughs> and sold in Africa and brought over to the United States and put into slavery. But one of the things that, that's very important that we need, need to look at is in order to have a robust economic development plan, we need to have tools. And our people that we charge with doing, we need to give them the tools. They work together as a team. The universities, the community colleges, uh, South, uh, the University of South Alabama, Bishop State, uh, work with the, with the county, with the city, with the chamber, with the schools. Uh, the work, the W, is it IOA? The Workforce Investment uh, 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 I can't remember, uh, of Arizona, they work together to try to find some of the things or, or money. Uh, the chamber over there created a navigator position through a grant fund, which helps them nav navigate through, through funds, which we don't do here. It, uh, it works with, uh, they got an IDA grant to go and see how economic development is done in similar cities. Uh, they're looking to expand uh, many things. The, the workforce program and the universities have really gone into helping create the jobs that are going to be needed. Uh, Airbus has created a very unique uh, program for internships and it's by application and if you're chosen you can go in there, you can earn money, but they will train you. So those are some
some of the tools that we in this community need to take advantage of, and it's just uh, uh, amazing. I've got some contact numbers, so hopefully in the future uh, we can reach out to them and get more information uh, of, of, of what they do, and it's just, uh, it was a very intense uh, half day flying in, then a whole day the next day from eight, eight nine o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night, and then the next day was from eight o'clock till noon, so, and then fly back. So I've got all the information there and, and uh, looking forward to, to moving forward there. <coughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for allowing me to speak so long. I never do, but I did today, I guess. I'll keep mine short then, <laughs> Supervisor Reese. <laughs> to compensate for that, usually I'm the one that's talking a long time. Um, I had an opportunity to participate in the Santa Cruz County River cleanup. Um, about 140 people showed up this Saturday um, at 8 o'clock at 7.30 in the morning at the Ron Morris Park to clean several bottle dams that had been created in the last flood season. Um, so the work that they thought would take about four hours, we were done in about an hour and a half. So I want to congratulate that group for putting that on. And I would tell you the name of the group, but I forgot my phone at home and that's where I keep all my notes. <laughs> so I just let you know that that happened and Ray Sayre was one of the big organizers of it. So other than that, Madam Manager. Hey, Mr. Chairman, just quickly on Thursday, ASU is playing UCLA for first place in the back, just in case you guys were interested. <laughs> <laughs> ASU, I, ASU actually might have a good chance because uh, the other schools have to play the Oregon schools, and so U of A was sick that weekend. <laughs> and so the Oregon school was sick that weekend, so this is going to go through the Pac-12 teams. So just so that we... Excuses, excuses. <laughs> so. Good morning again, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, members of the public. Mauricio and I attended our regular ARPA update. I also attended the swearing in for our newly elected officials and our appointed recorder. Um, Jesus and I met with our consultants regarding our upcoming uh, DC trip in which we talked to the federal delegation as well as the agencies and try to secure funding. Uh, we also held a department head meeting over the last two weeks and then I also attended um, LPC at CSA along with county managers and the ASAP monthly meetings. Um, Jesus attended those as well. And that's all I have to report. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> item E, Department of Reports and Activities. Um, item one, Finance, Cash, Investment, Expenditures, and a Revenue Report. Mauricio, good morning. <coughs> good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The cash and investment report, the general fund has an overall balance of $20,094,302 with an investment amount of just a little bit over $10 million. The road fund has an overall balance of $1,100,857 with an investment amount of $7,093. The flood control district has an overall balance of $1,179,193 with an investment amount of $268,000. The jail district has an overall balance of $3,621,738 with an investment amount of just a little bit over a million dollars. Total for all funds, overall balance $47,158,045 with an investment amount of $13,605,375. With an estimated end of the month balance of fifteen million nine hundred thirty thousand nine hundred and ninety two. Okay, are there any questions for Mauricio? No, sir. Okay. We're still doing better than we were last year at this time. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, that is correct. Uh Vice Chairman. Yeah. We're doing, and we're doing and even with the, the special funds which are grants that we have to pay, so we're still doing that. Correct. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Item F, action items. Number one, discussion possible action for authorization to fill A, vac vacant deputy county manager position, B, two vacant deputy positions from the sheriff, and C, vacant deputy sheriff position from the move, sheriff. Move to approve, Mr. Chairman. I, I'll, I'm gonna second, but uh, under discussion, uh, Mr. Chair, um, we're looking for a vacant deputy county manager position um, I don't think we've gone through the process yet of selecting a, a county manager uh, I, I know Jesus is the current uh, deputy and, and 
you know, uh, I, I personally would like to see something official before we move on and, and look for a, a deputy county uh, manager, in, in my opinion. That, okay. Okay. That, that's all I have. <laughs> all right. I was, didn't know if that was all. Um, are all these positions in the budget? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item two, discussion of possible action to create and fill a public health aid position in the Environmental Health Department. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item three, discussion possible action to approve the appointment of precinct committee persons from Santa Cruz County Democratic Party, Claudia P. Alejos, Potrero number 22, and that's from Francis Glad from the Santa Cruz County Democratic Party. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item four, discussion possible action to approve the JAVS Classic Coverage Extended Warranty Preventative Maintenance and Support Agreement from January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023 from Superior Court. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Item five, discussion possible action to approve scope of work for government relations consultant and authorization to fill to authorization to advertise. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item six, discussion possible action to approve the standard professional services contract for provision of indigent, indigent or mandated representation from the Superior Court. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item seven, discussion of possible action to approve the lease purchase agreement number 10001492293 with JP Morgan Chase Bank for computer hardware, IT security equipment, vehicles, and other equipment in the amount of $2 million and allow the administrative service director to sign any additional documents. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item A, discussion possible action to approve resolution number 2023-01, declaration of official intent to reimburse the county for computer hardware, IT <coughs> security equipment, vehicles, and other equipment in the amount not to exceed $2 million. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 9, discussion possible action to approve amendment number 1 to the professional services agreement with Pierce Coleman for representation in connection with general election matters to increase the not to exceed amount to $100,000 a year. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Is, is this related to the last uh, him or Jennifer. This is related to the election matters that we're contracting with Pierce Coleman. Great. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 10, discussion possible action to, prove, to approve bond for duplicate warrants A through F. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excuse me, I misquote, I misspoke on this last one. It's the discussion for bonds for duplicate warrants for A through C. Should, do I need to do anything? We're good? So okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and move that we approve as corrected. Second. Okay. Thank you very much. And, then vote. and a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 11, tax valuation adjustments A through F. There's the F. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion, a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 12, monthly reports. Madam Clerk. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. The monthly reports are in. Yeah, good. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 13, approval of minutes from January 3rd, 2023. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 14, demand, Supervisor Malera. 
Mr. Chair, move to approve demands totaling $934,909.19, or from the general fund. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We can pay our bills. And do I hear a motion so we go into our study session? Mr. Chairman, I will move that we recess our regular session and convene into the study session. We are now second. in the study session. Item one, American. We need to vote on. Oh, a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. American Rescue Plan Act update. So, who's going to do that, Jennifer? Oh, Mauricio. Mauricio. Good morning again, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good morning. The lights are brightly shining on you. Thank you, Javier. <laughs> I w uh, we wanted to provide an update on the. Uh, American Rescue Plan Act, based on the uh, allocation that the county received back uh, a couple of years ago and then the second uh, trench uh, last year. So we received a little bit over $9 million, and there before you is the breakdown on the percentages, and this is something that hasn't changed. This is uh, uh, something we went over also before. The, the percentages of, of the distribution shows you the, the, the road fund revenue laws, the general fund revenue laws, and then the community projects which involve the um, small business loan and also the nonprofit program as well and then the broadband project and then the ARPA balance next please Javier. so the distribution there uh, you saw in the first slide was was the percentage now it's uh, on the uh, monetary side and the reason why I wanted to bring this up with management and, and with with the board was to go over the ARPA available balance, which right now sits at one million seven hundred thirty-one thousand. We had previously identified when we, uh, Jesus and I, uh, based on an assessment, we identified certain projects that are potential projects that might go well with the balance <coughs> that's pending there. So you see the main complex HVAC replacement, which is estimated at about a million dollars. The main complex fire suppression, hundred thousand dollars. The roof repair for the main complex, four hundred and fifty thousand. Electrical upgrades for the main complex, estimated at about two hundred and fifty thousand. <throat> the assessor uh, GIS flyover, three hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, the court employee parking barrier, that's uh, estimated at one hundred and fifty thousand. And then a couple of requests, one from two backfire at one six one hundred sixteen thousand and the Sonora Elgin Fire District at 141000 All these funds must be obligated. We still have until the December 31st of 2024. However, we just wanted to, some direction from the board to see what, what type of, of projects you, you want to fund with the available ARPA balance. Next, please. Based on, on that, um, management <coughs> had went ahead and did an assessment and provided some options for the board to consider. Now, not these options are not written in stone. They're just availability of, of something so we can have direction. There's an action item. Once we go back to the to the regular meeting, hopefully the, by, by that point you were able to provide us with some type of direction on how we can move forward with the expenditure of the, of the remaining balance. So if you see uh, the first column, we have different there's different options out there. We can contemplate certain items in the FY24 budget, which is that cycle is coming up soon, or we can entertain any of the four options that are out there or interchange as, as you see fit. Option number one includes the uh, HVAC. It includes the fire suppression, the roof repair, and then the court's employee parking barrier. That's listed at about 1.7 million, which leaves a little bit uh, left over about 31,000 left over there from, from the ARPA balance. Option two, again, includes the HVAC replacement, the roof repair, <coughs> and the GA, G, GIS flyover. That's a little bit over 1.8 1, 1. million. Option number three includes the HVAC replacement, the fire suppression, the electrical upgrades, the quartz parking barrier, and then their request by the Tubac Fire District and the Sonora Elgin Fire District. And then the last option includes 
pretty much everything that you see there except the main uh, complex HVAC replacement. Now when we get to ask you all the fun questions? That's correct. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Research, Supervisor Moreno. Okay. <clears throat> Is there anybody from the public who would like to address the board in this study session? Except for Dr. Verona. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, several months ago, Dr. Montero, on behalf of the Santa Cruz, uh, Santa Cruz County Council on, Council on Aging, uh, submitted a letter making a request uh, for $30,000 as a part of the appropriation for that and if you have any questions for us uh, we are here for that uh, we would like to be considered uh, for the funding of that the letter was submitted I'm surprised that we weren't included as part of those options in there but anyway we would like to be given serious consideration for that and we can tell you which you all know about our program and everything and uh, Dr. Montiel and myself are both been volunteers there for the last eight years so uh, I would like to uh, answer any questions or concerns that you might have and that you please give that serious consideration for the elderly of our community <coughs> did, Dr. Arona, did, yes. did you go through the process and get denied when the applications for ARPA funds through so your process here yeah 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 well let me tell you what happened there I didn't apply, and I'll tell you why I didn't apply. You guys had a, a program here to invite people to come over here to explain the program. And I sat here for over an hour for the program, and it was very evident to me that there was already a decision made of who you wanted to give the money to. I felt very set aside. All the presenters that were there from Mexico, one presenter, and all the other a young man here presenters were basically alluding to one segment of the community and that why they should apply and why they should be considered. And that being the arts, I mean, if you look at the funding that was recommended, you can see where uh, basically the, the money went to. And I didn't feel, to tell you the truth, I didn't feel welcomed at that at all. And I expressed my concern to the county manager immediately after that. I expressed my concern, and I expressed my concern to the supervisor that represents me also. So that's why I'm here. Not that I'm asking for a special present. Not, I did attend, and that's exactly how I felt. Anything else? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I would have to uh, check again on the list uh, based on what the the uh, number of applicants for nonprofits were submitted and were for for whatever reason were were uh, not able to be funded. I would have to uh, double check that list with uh, with Angie Donaldson. Uh, would it be too late for a senior center? <coughs> I will double check that, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and um, I mean we we will we will move forward as you know whatever the board desires and and whatever the the direction the board provides us today, and if you we can prepare a package and and and, and so they can go through the uh, application process. Uh, Mr. Chair, just yes, sir. 
just to add to what Supervisor Reese mentioned, uh, I personally uh, agree with him that, that this program is amazing. It does uh, uh, a great job for our elderly community, um, and uh, I, I'm just uh, kind of disappointed that it fell through the track, through the cracks, you know, where we could have helped with the process. Um, but I, I do agree if, if we can still do it through Angie. I don't see, I personally don't see a problem with that. Thank you. If I may. Yes. yes, Madam Manager. So first of all, let me disclose that I sit on the board of the Council on Aging as the treasurer. It's an unpaid position. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to put that out in the open. Um, so Supervisor Reese, I mean, we obviously can look at that, but there were nonprofits that met the deadlines that didn't get funded. And so if we open it up for one entity, you know, we're potentially creating a conflict for those ent those entities that submitted the information in a timely manner. You know, there's ARPA funds available. That's the study session that we're under. If we wanted to take another round of nonprofits, you know, that would be an option. Uh, one of the items under your options would need to come off the, you know, the list. <clears throat> but. Um, I, I, when Mauricio gets the information, because I don't remember either, we gave the nonprofits first. I just think that that could set a dangerous precedent if we're not going to open the nonprofits up again. And I apologize to my board members. <laughs> um. You're going to get reprimanded after this. <laughs> <laughs> again, it's an unpaid position, so. <laughs> Okay, Jennifer, I'm going to be first. Um, so Santa Cruz County did a pretty incredible thing with our ARPA funding. We made a million dollars available to local businesses. We made half a million dollars available to nonprofits in our community. If you look across the state at counties of our size, there was one county that did it. If you look across the country at counties of our size, there were probably just a handful that did it. This was an incredible program that we put together for this community. Um, and Dr. Verona, I'm sorry that you felt that you were excluded, but if I look, this, this board had nothing to do with the selection of the entities or the businesses that received this. This was all handled by the Santa Cruz, excuse me, by the business, the business loans were handled by Chicanos for the Casa, and the nonprofit things were handled by the Southern Arizona Community Foundation. Why you chose not to do that or why you felt disparaged in that thing, I wasn't at the meeting. I can't address those issues. I'm sorry you felt that way, but it was but the spectrum of of nonprofits across Santa Cruz County that received funding, it was a really broad spectrum. And I'm really sorry that you felt the way you felt at that thing. Was it a complicated process? Extremely complicated process because I went to the meetings with those nonprofits once they had been allocated the money and the work that they had to do and the training that they had to do to get their paperwork in order and their financial and the business part of their 501c3s in order to accept federal money. Very, very high bar. They worked really, really hard for what turned out to be some money, but not an awful lot of money. Um, so I want to, you know, I'm very proud of that program. I think that program was terrific for us. Um, I'm not going to ask you what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> because it has to do with the other governmental agency and entity in this community and how much money they gave you. So it's really, <laughs> how much money did the city of Nogales give you from their ARPA funding? The question is how much ARPA money did the city of Nogales appropriate to the Santa Cruz Council on Aging? Yes. Zero. Thank you very much. So it's really challenging because I know my two board mates represent the city of Nogales and I know that what you do at the Council on Aging is really important work. It's really good work. but. We had a process for the nonprofits, and it's very hard for us. It's very hard for us to be put in a position where you're asking us for direct funding at this part of the process. 
for this. But I respect you and the work that you and Dr. Montiel do for that entity. So, so, so so one Supervisor thing, Reese. So one thing is, it was interesting that people that I talked to that went to the city when this money, they said, you have to go to the county. The county's the one. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Test, test, test. So a lot of people came to me and said, I went to the city because my business is in the city. I wanted to apply. I said, you have to go to the county. The county's going to be giving out the money. And I, I still don't know what allocations or not other than what I've read in the newspaper, what was given or what was used or what was not used or went, went, went out. But, you know, I think when you look at everything that we've done as we try to be fair and and, and I agree with Bruce. I, I mean, I'm, I know you told me about the process, and I know you talked to Jennifer about the process. And, and, and those are some of the things is that if it was general fund dollars, I guess maybe there's a little leeway, not much. We still have to comply with the law. But dealing with the federal government and their compliance, and I know that our staff has to be very careful, even though it was a direct allocation for once, we didn't have to pay it up front and then submit for reimbursement. But, uh, you know, I don't know if there's going to be any other uh, other opportunities coming down. I know when we go to visit our elected officials in D.C., perhaps that could be one of the other things that say there's still needs, especially for for, you know, finding resources to help feed the elderly where Maybe there can be a separate appropriation made just uh, uh, for those uh, uh, nonprofits that are helping uh, f f feed not just the elderly but children. <coughs> so that could be one of our, our, our asks when we go back there. And uh, because I think w when I look at what's happening across the country with inflation, with everything, I mean, it's hard right now. Gasoline came down a little bit. Now it's inched up a little bit again. When you look at the price of a dozen eggs, now I mean it's and that's our restaurant guy. <laughs> uh, you know, because of the bird flu and how many birds that they, they had to put down to 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 avoid any kind of massive uh, uh, pandemic on, on 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 the laying hens. So I mean, there's a there's a lot of things that that have have become much more crucial, especially with food and 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 uh, el elderly that for the most part are all on a very short budget that whatever they get from Social Security or and they have to decide do I pay for my medicines or do I buy food? So what you do out there, it, it's God's work because it gives the seniors an opportunity to get together, at least, you know, have a friendship so they're not alone in their own home. So. That's my commitment to you, Dr. Verona. We'll, we'll go and we'll, we'll lobby or appeal to perhaps maybe a smaller round to assist uh, organizations such as yours to, to continue to provide that service. It, it might be. Thank you. Supervisor Malera. Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Madam Manager, it's, if we do in the future have other funding, maybe we can, which I <coughs> think we might. We might have some, uh, maybe look into uh, funding this organization. And it might be something that we can do in a smaller way in our budget because of the needs and what's going on with the economy and the effect it's having on the elderly. But those are the things that we can talk about in the future. But I think for this program, I think the ship has sailed. Is there any other discussion as part of this presentation? Any call to the public? Anybody in online that would like to address the board? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I will move that we adjourn our study session and reconvene regular meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 15, discussion possible action to direct staff regarding projects to fund for the remaining ARPA monies as presented in the study session. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we uh, adopt option number one. 
Mr. Chair, yes. I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item H. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned.